Arctic Oven tent is an excellent tent for a variety of conditions in Alaska. It'll work in an Arctic situation, above tree line like we are here, or down in a low timbered area. Let's take a look at the setup and a few of the features of this tent. On all four sides of the tent, there's a D-ring sewn into the tent body, and that attaches to the inside of the rain fly. And the purpose of that is when you stake the rain fly out, it pulls the tent body out and gives you more space on the interior of the tent. That works really well if you're sleeping on cots inside the tent and you have a cot against the side wall because it pulls the tent body away from your cot so it's not in your face while you're sleeping. Okay, let's talk about a, a couple of the features that you can see without the rain fly on the tent. Uh, these are all available with the rain fly on, of course, but uh, when we're looking at the tent body, it's a little bit easier to see some of these things. The first thing is the ventilation system. I have a tube vent right here on the front of the tent body and I can close it or open it from inside the tent. It has a draw cord and a toggle. So you just close it by pulling on the draw cord and securing it with the toggle if you don't need the ventilation. If you do want the ventilation, open it back up and it'll stay just like that. So that's a good vent. We have another one on the other side of the tent that we'll look at in a minute. Uh, also, I want to take a look at the size of this window. Uh, we have another window on the other side of the tent which allows good flow through ventilation. It's got mosquito netting on it so we don't have to worry about the bugs getting inside. And all you have to do is once you're inside the tent you can open this zipper, roll the door flap down and you've got all the ventilation you need. Uh, that's particularly useful if you're using the wood stove. And I have wood stove sitting right here. It's just a little sheep herder, sheet metal stove. Most of the pipes are inside, all the fittings and so on. And then we have a separate bundle of pipes that are used with this stove. We'll set that up in a minute. But if you are using the stove, you need good ventilation inside the tent uh, for carbon monoxide buildup. So you can open up the vent here in the front and also the one in the back and you get really good ventilation that way. The other thing I want to talk about is the door. Uh, this door uses a heavy duty YKK self-healing zipper and it has two pull tabs on it so you can zip it from either side. Uh, one of the best things about the way they design this door is the size of the door. So if you're getting in and out of the tent with bulky sleeping bags, cots, and things like that, you've got plenty of room to get in and out of this tent without tearing the door opening up. And we'll just go ahead and unzip it. You can take a look at how large this is. And the door will roll up. door rolls up just like that and then you clip it with these straps you can clip the door with these straps and keep it out of the way when you're entering and exiting the tent while you're loading it taking your gear inside or bringing things out and so on it's a really wide ample door so there's plenty of room to get in and out of the tent okay on the back side of the tent we also have another vent here, another window. It's smaller than the one in the front and it's positioned higher on the tent body. And you can open it from inside the tent if you need to ventilate for moisture buildup or so on. We also have another tube vent right here and it's also higher on the tent body. And it has a toggle and a draw cord so you can open that or close it as needed. And then finally, up on the top panel here, uh, is our stove jack and that's where the, the stove pipe will go through this tent. This tent uses a sheep herder uh, stove which you can use or not use as you want uh, but that vent stays open all the time. When we put the rain fly on we can leave the vent closed if we're not using the stove so we've got good rain protection. Uh, but this uh, stove jack has a boot that goes around the stove pipe and a piece of non-burnable fabric around it so it's really good for uh, keeping the temperature of the stove pipe from affecting the, the tent body fabric. Another really nice feature of the Arctic oven is this really wide storm flap at the bottom of the rain fly. And this works really well in rainy conditions because if you have wind driven rain, it prevents that rain from being blown up underneath the rain fly and coming through the side wall of your tent. In a snow situation, you can pack snow over the outside of this flap and it'll keep the wind out of your tent as well. 
So it makes for a really nice, snug, warm shelter. The oven has multiple tie down points all the way around the outside of the rain fly. From the midpoint of the body of the tent all the way up to the top where the pole sections uh, bend, we counted nine high wind pullouts. And of course, you've got multiple tie down points around the bottom of the rain fly, which are normally staked out to the ground. So by the time you get this thing nailed down, uh, it's going to stand up in really severe winds, which makes it ideal for most Alaska situations. You don't need to use all the tie down points if you're in timbered country, of course, but if you're in open country like we are here, the tie downs are really a lifesaver, especially in severe weather. Our tie down cords in this case are 550 cord or parachute cords, which has a very strong braking strength. But of course, if you need to, you can always double up with some really heavy stuff. Uh, braided nylon is an excellent choice, and you can use that for your tie down cords if you need something a little stouter. Okay, once we have the rain fly installed on this tent, we have three features on the back that we need to take a look at. The first one is the access to the window, which is right here. Pull that flap up. There's no mosquito netting on this. What you do is you roll this up, and then you open the window from inside the tent, which does have mosquito netting on it, and then you've got ventilation here. If it's raining, you're going to want to leave this flap closed. It's velcroed on all three sides and attached on the top, of course, and you can roll it up and clip it together with these straps that are sewn into the rain fly. So if you need ventilation on a clear sunny day, that's a great way to do it. The second ventilation feature is a tube vent right here through the rain fly, which also corresponds to the tube vent that's on the inside of the tent body. And so you can extend that tube vent right through the one on the rain fly and you've got ventilation right into the tent body. And then of course if you need to close that, of course if you need to close that you just pull the string and close the toggle and that'll keep the rain out of your tent if you're if you have a rainstorm going on. Finally up at the top of the rain fly in the back we have a flap that covers the stove jack and that keeps rain from going in through the opening on the tent body. Of course when you're using the stove you can roll that up and then your stove jack goes right through the rain fly. It's a really good system. You may find yourself in a situation where you need to cook your meal inside the vestibule area. And in that case, uh, Arctic Oven has a tube vent right here on the rain fly in the vestibule area. And it's an excellent way to ventilate that steam and heat from your stove right outside of the tent. The Arctic Oven has a huge door in the front and you can use it one of three ways. You can either open it from the center. There's a zipper on both sides. You can open it from the center and roll it up to the top to open the whole front. Or if you have wind quartering from the front, you can open up only one side, unstake the storm flap, and enter the tent from this side or from the other side. It's a really convenient feature. <laughs> inside and have a look.
inside of the Arctic oven is as amazing as the outside. It includes all the basic features you need, plus some add-on extras that are just fantastic. To begin with, we have a bathtub floor in this tent. If you look over on the side wall, you'll notice that the floor fabric comes partway up the side wall of the tent. There are no seams in the corners. What that means is, if you have severe rain or snow melt under your tent, it's not going to leak in through the seams around the corners. It's an excellent feature in any tent for using in Alaska. Because the floor is so large in the Arctic oven, you do have to have some seams. And we have one right here and another one back here towards the back. So when you buy a new Arctic oven, you want to make sure that you seal all of those seams so you won't have any leaks. In addition to that, around the perimeter of the floor, in each of the four corners, we have a clip which is used for uh, installing a footprint inside the tent. So you can protect your floor. In addition to that, the footprint allows you to remove it from the tent if you have debris that's been tracked in. And then you can uh, gather that together, take it outside, shake it off, put it back in, and your floor is clean again. Generally, with any of my tents, I, I take my shoes off when I come inside, so wear and tear on the floor is minimized. But occasionally you do have debris building up on the floor, especially in this case where we have the wood stove. Uh, you'll have wood particles and bark and things like that that will accumulate on the floor. So having that footprint inside the tent can be a real asset. Some other standard features that come with the Arctic oven are tie-down points in each of the four corners up at the top. I have a loop up here in the corner. I have another loop up in this corner and I have one in each of the other two corners in front of me here. And what I can do with those is I can secure parachute cord all the way around the perimeter of the ceiling which gives me the ability to hang up wet clothes and so on. The addition of a wood stove is one of the things that makes the Arctic oven unique. Uh, we have a stove jack in the ceiling which can be closed if we don't need it and we also have a cover for on the rain fly that covers that jack that goes through the rain fly as well and it prevents water from coming in the tent if we're not using the stove. In this case we've installed the stove and so what we do is at the bottom we put a cloth down here to protect the floor. Not really necessary but I like to keep my tents nice and clean so we've got a cloth underneath it that's heat proof. The sheep herder stove itself is a whole separate discussion but we'll go over some of the basics here. There are fold down legs here to keep you from having to set the stove on the floor so you don't worry you, have to, you don't have to worry about heat transferring to the floor and melting your tent fabric. It's got a damper on it here to control airflow. You've got a damper down here and you've got another one up here at the midpoint of the stove pipe so you can shut that thing down if you need to at night. A lot of times people will start the stove heat the tent up to get it nice and toasty to go to bed and then you'll shut the dampers down and go to sleep and you'll be just fine. In some cases you might want to leave it on a slow burn all night in colder temperatures such as in the winter time um, and you can do that with this stove. Behind the stove we have another vent and in this case we've got it opened up. It velcros right to the side wall so it stays out of the way and we've got really good flow through ventilation. I've also got a vent panel on the rain fly that we've removed in this case so we have good flow through ventilation. It's an excellent way to keep the tent dry inside. If it's raining outside we can open up this vent but close the one on the outside and we still have good ventilation through the tent body which is going to carry moisture out of the tent and keep the contents dry. The tent also gives you a side pocket on each side, so wherever you're sleeping you've got a place to store your glasses, your flashlight, your reading material, and so on. On one side, there's a placard which contains a warning for people that are using the wood stove in the tent. And basically what it says is, first of all, that the tent body fabric is fire retardant material. So if it does catch on fire, all you have to do is remove the source of combustion away from the material and it'll quit burning. So that's an excellent safety feature. The other thing the warning placard tells you about, it warns you to not close all the vents when you're running the wood stove. And the purpose for that is if you're running the wood stove and you go to sleep and all the vents are closed, you're going to burn up all the oxygen in the tent potentially and uh, you can end up in a fatal situation. So when you're running the wood stove, make sure you leave the vents open and uh, you won't have that risk. After several decades of guiding, fishing, hunting, and camping in remote backcountry areas of Alaska, I can't think of a better tent to get the job done than the Arctic Oven. My name's Mike Strahan, and we'll see you on the mountain.